Sustainability is a word that has risen in our vocabulary over the past 20 years, and for good reason. The first ever light bulb was switched on in 1879, and now, 150 years later, the energy we need to fill the world with light is killing the planet. Why? Well, generating electricity requires a lot of fossil fuel, and burning fossil fuel is generating pollution and choking the planet with carbon emissions. But we can't give up electricity now. We're too dependent and too far gone. Enter the solar panel, a glorious invention that turns the sun's rays into electricity by stimulating electrons using silicon cells. Good, sure, sure. We don't really need to know the science behind it, but I thought you might like to know. So, we would need a sunny place to house enough solar panels to answer our sustainability needs. So, what about the world's biggest desert? Hello, and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions. I'm your host, Rebecca Felgate, and today I'm asking, what if we covered the Sahara Desert in solar panels? It's honestly nice to have a sunny little break from the old SCP Foundation as much as I like them, but yay, sunshine. Before we get into this video, why don't you guys let me know what you do to help the sustainability effort? I now have a reusable coffee cup and some sustainable straws, and I really try to take my own bags with me when I go to the shops. I also walk everywhere and do as much vintage shopping as I can. My mum's got a couple of solar panels on her house, which is pretty cool too. Although they're a bit expensive. Do let me know what you do in the comments section down below, and if you've got any tips and tricks for me, then I would love to hear them. Also, why don't you check out the links in our description box to our video sources and the team that went into making this video. Stick around to the end where I'll be reading replies to some previous comments. Okay, so the Sahara is massive. She big, she hot. The Sahara is located on the continent of Africa, spanning 11 countries Algeria, Chad, Egypt, Libya, Mali, Mauritania, Morocco, Niger. Western Sahara, Sudan, and Tunisia. At 9.2 million square kilometers, she is comparable to the landmass of the United States or China. If we could magically fill up the entire Sahara with solar panels, we would be able to generate enough energy to power the world several times over. In fact, the world energy consumption stats seem to suggest that just 1.2% of the Sahara Desert would be sufficient to cover all of world's energy needs if we installed solar panels. So, if we covered the whole thing, well, we could just make it rain in renewable energy, right? Unless people started covering their homes in neon lights, which would be pretty tron and I guess kind of cool, we likely wouldn't notice too much of a difference day to day in our first world countries. Let's be honest, how many of us actually think about where our electricity comes from and how much is in storage and when it will run out? We're just happy when stuff works, to be honest. But for Africa, it would be an absolute game changer. Right now, 600 million people in the continent of Africa are living without electricity. So if it's harnessed in their own sandy backyard, which would mean better quality of schools and health clinics as well as a much better quality of life in general. With the new valuable world resource and economic boost, Africa as a continent could face a much brighter future, with many countries finally rising out of poverty and becoming urban centres for commerce. The trouble is though, installing a solar panel can be pricey, so installing a million, maybe tens of millions, well, that would require resources and labour, which means major investment, and who's got that kind of money to set that up right now? The United States of America? Perhaps China? Let's just put a pin in that thought for a moment. Forbes estimate covering just 1.2% of the Sahara with solar panels would cost around $5 trillion, which is only a quarter of the US national debt. It can be done. But if we were covering 100% of the whole desert, well, $500 trillion and change it would cost, so really it's just not gonna happen. Even if we did do it, there would also be the issue of transporting the energy and providing water fuel for the solar panels. Solar panels need liquid to work, and the Sahara is famously very dry, save for a small number of oasis towns. Right now, the production of solar panels isn't environmentally benign. Producing enough to cover the Sahara would take up a lot of resources, and it would be a while for us to recoup our resource investment, and again, the output that we get from them isn't the same as the input. Okay, so let's talk environments and ecosystems. Messing with a large space of the earth can really change things up. Right now, the erosion of the desert produces sandstorms that pollutes the air in Africa and the Middle East. Solar panels would stabilize the sand, reducing these sandstorms, which would actually be a lot better for air quality. It would also increase rainfall and stimulate vegetation. The Sahara currently reflects a lot of light because of the light color of the sand. Now, solar panels are dark, which means they absorb the light rather than reflecting it back. This would mean the ground would get even hotter, meaning that the Sahara would be a very extreme environment. It would be super, super, super roasting hot pre-rain, and then cooler post-rain, and then 
icy during the freezing winter nights. Crazy! This would no doubt affect the wildlife living in the Sahara. And yes, there is life here. Lizards, hyrax, sand vipers, adaxes, African wild dogs, bustards and redneck ostrich live there just to name a few. Covering their entire home of solar panels would be very disruptive to them to say the least. Ok, but listen up, remember that pin we put in the video earlier when we started talking about countries and politics? Well it is time to pull the pin out and brace ourselves for that inevitable grenade. Tensions between the United States and the Middle East, if we're going to oversimplify years of strife, do largely come down to political interference, mainly because of oil and other key resources held up in the Middle East. Almost all African countries, in fact almost all countries simply just couldn't afford to pay for solar panels across the Sahara. But maybe America could, and perhaps China, Russia and Europe. Ethically, who exactly should be allowed to own the world's biggest resource of electricity? The people whose country it sits in? The people who pay for it? Electricity has kind of become a human right at this point. It certainly is lucrative too. There's a lot of money to be made here. The energy would best serve the people living in Africa surrounding the Sahara, as we discussed. But but if one country pays for the project, they would likely get to keep the product and set the market prices, which would probably be too high for neighbouring African countries to pay for. The United States, China, Japan, Europe, Russia, whoever else, who would accept other countries meddling in Africa? To me, it sounds like a bit of a war maker. Also, how are the Middle East going to feel when less people want to buy their oil? Not great I bet, so yeah. Drama, drama. In reality, we won't cover the Sahara in solar panels. We don't have enough resources or cash to do it in the first place, and politically, it's best if nobody but Africa meddles in Africa for fear of wider repercussions. The takeaway silver lining from this video for me is how little space is actually needed for solar energy. We don't need to cover the whole Sahara. Maybe each of the world's countries will invest a little bit in their own local renewable energy and make smaller solar energy farms in available spaces in their own land. But, well it might save the planet, but will that make anyone super stinking rich? Will we do it? Well right now, therein lies your answer. Do let me know what you thought to this video. Do you think we should cover the Sahara in solar panels? And if not the Sahara, then where should we build? What do you think to solar panels? Also do let me know what you are doing to help the environment. I would absolutely love to hear it. Maybe it will help me find a better way to live myself. Before I go, I'm going to read some comments from Jack's video, What if the Titanoboa snake for SCP-3000? Now this was a really interesting video, and I love the floating voice that is Jack Finn and really he did a great job because comparing the two is like comparing a microbe and a mega god. Good analogies. Huffick said, this makes no sense, SCP-3000 could sneeze and that snake would disintegrate. Exactly. Enigmatic Varan said, here's a question for you guys, what are you smoking? Oh great tea bags. Mostly. Thank you guys for watching to the end of the video. Why don't you leave a thumbs up and click on that big beautiful notification bell. Stay tuned for more answers. I'm your host Rebecca Felgate. I'll catch you in the next video. But until then, stay curious, stay alert, and never ever stop questioning. Oh.